Yeah, you know, Anthony Joshua was trying to bully me the other day, you know. He was trying to really put it on me the other day, Joshua. Let me tell you what happened. I was in the Ingle Gym getting interviewed with Kid Galahad by this YouTube channel called Pep Talk UK. And after the interview, Pep Talk UK said to me that he was going to interview Joshua Boazzi. You know, at the Institute of Sport, where Robert McCracken trains Joshua Boazzi and Anthony Joshua. So Pep Talk UK said to me, do you want to go as well? So I said, yeah. So we went to the gym and we walked in and I sat down on one side of the gym and Joshua was on the other side of the gym. And uh, he was like looking at me like that. And then he went like that. And then I went like that. And I could see him just keep looking at me, like, you know, looking all suspicious. And then I started texting this woman who is one of society's rejects. And then I looked up and I seen Joshua walking towards me. And I was sat down and he stood there and I was looking up at him. And he said to me, what did you say about me in your videos? You know, because I've done videos saying that he's fake and he's just laughing at Graham Norton shit jokes, being all media friendly and media trained, stay humble. You know, all that shit. And I said, Lennox Lewis would have battered him in his prime. You know, I said all that in the videos, didn't I? In the past. And I think his little entourage pulled up the video. You know, of me saying that I think Lennox would have battered him in his prime. And so his little entourage showing him that video of me saying that. And then I looked up and Joshua was walking towards me. And he stood in front of me like that, yeah. And I was looking up at him and he said to me, what did you say about me? So I said, what did I say? And then he said, get out my gym. You know, like how Floyd Mayweather said to his dad. Get down, get out my gym. Come put me out, you motherfucker, bro. Come put me out of here, bro. Come put me out, motherfucker. Well, you know when Anthony Joshua told me to get the fuck out of his gym, I wanted to say to him, put me out your gym, punk. But <sighs> he's too big, too strong, like how Carl Flotch was for GGG. So it's a bit of a risk, innit? It's a bit of a risk. So I stood up and I was looking at him and I wanted to smack him, you know. I wanted to smack him, you know, with a lucky punch from the gods. I wanted to fucking nail him. But it's a bit of a gamble, isn't it? Because you know, if I hit him and it didn't have any effect at all and then he uppercutted me like he did Klitschko, you know, I could end up in a wheelchair like Gerald McLennan. So it's a bit of a risk, isn't it? But I can punch, you know. I know I didn't really achieve anything in boxing, but you know, in the streets, I've knocked out three women. So I can punch. In the streets, I'm unbeaten, like Mayweather, TBE. I'm 3-0 in the streets, TBE. The best ever, TBE. Yeah, woman down. So I can punch. So you know, if I hit Joshua, I don't know, it could have had an effect, but it's hard to say, innit? It's the unknown, innit? It could have had an effect on him. It could have really fucking, yeah. If I hit him with a lucky punch from the gods, it could have had a good effect on him, like it did on those three women. But it might not have had any effect, so it's a bit of a gamble, isn't it? So I just started to walk out of the gym when he said, get the fuck out of my gym. I started to walk out of the gym. And when I was walking out of the gym, he called me a clown, you know, like he did Lennox Lewis. And when he said that, I wanted to really fucking nail him, you know. But again, I thought it's a bit of a risk, innit? It's a bit of a risk. So I just went home. And you know, when I was going home, I was so angry with myself, you know. I thought, why didn't you fucking do something? How can you let him talk to you like that? 
And I thought, you know what? I might stab him like Kel Brook. Do you know what I mean? I might go back and stab him like Kel Brook. Because he might be big and that boy. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, Kel Brook was a world champion, wasn't he? And he got put in hospital by some little fat cunt with a knife. So it doesn't matter how good of, of a fighter you are. Do you know what I mean? You know that Myra Hindley? She was just a little woman and she killed loads of people. I know they were only kids. You know, kids are quite easy to kill, aren't they? Ask Adam Smith. But still, anyone can fuck up anybody really, can't they? Joshua trying to bully me. I wanted to do him in, you know. It's true what I say about Joshua though, isn't it? He's already made that money. He's already secured the bag. So why does he still need to be media friendly? Just be yourself. You don't need to impress links. You've already made that money. Yeah, you've already secured the bag. Just be yourself. You don't need to impress Graham Norton. Just be yourself. Joshua trying to bully me. That's why I need to learn that jujitsu. Do you know what I mean? Because like, you know, it's all right being a good boxer, but on the ground is different, isn't it? You know, if you can take a man down and put him in an arm lock and break his arms and... Do you know what I mean? Boxing's just boxing, isn't it? That's why I think Dillian White would beat Joshua in a street fight. Because he's got that kickboxing background, hasn't he? Yeah, that was a good kick, wasn't it? So I think he's got the edge over Joshua in the streets. And that's what I need. So I need to do that jujitsu, man. Yeah, they look all right, don't they? See, I wouldn't mind doing jujitsu with them. But you know, the thought of rolling around with a man, it's just a bit off-putting. It's a bit gay, isn't it? It feels a bit gay, man. But yeah, I'll do it with them. Yeah, I'll put that photo in to try and sex up the video. You know, sex sells, don't it? So, that sexes up the video nicely, don't it? It adds a sexual element to the video, don't it? Because he was getting a bit negative, wasn't it? You know, Joshua trying to put it on me. He was getting a bit negative. Joshua trying to bully me. I need to learn those moves, you know, like just so I can take him down and fuck him up. You know, take Joshua down to the ground and fuck him up, break his arms. You know what I mean? He's got that stand up fighting in it, but you know, on the ground. He won't be any good, man. So I need to I need to step my ground game up. So when he calls me a clown again, I can do him in. And I seen him looking at my Instagram story the other day. Do you know what I mean? So he's trying to like keep his eye on me, yeah. And he's probably gonna pay somebody to try and do me in. So you know, if I get done in, it's because of Anthony Joshua or Call the Contradiction Frotch. It's more than likely gonna be one of those two. Anthony Joshua or Call the Contradiction Frotch. So I need to be safe. Be safe. Joshua putting it on me. He threatened my life. He threatened my life. Threatened. Cesaro. Joshua trying to threaten my life. Yeah, the black quitter got bullied the other day, didn't he? Yeah, he looks petrified, don't he? The black quitter. You know, desperately trying to avoid eye contact. He looks petrified, don't he? So then he started giving off blowjob signals. You know, trying to blowjob his way out of the fight. You know, offering a blowjob to avoid a beating. Faggot. Absolute faggot. And then when the blowjob offer didn't work, he started begging Coogan to get involved in it. Saying, Coogan, 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 hold my glasses, Coogan. Coogan, get involved, Coogan. Coogan, do something, Coogan. Faggot. Absolute faggot. You know, he's got no substance at all, has he, the black quitter. He's got no courage at all, has he. 
you know, begging Coogan to help him be safe. You know, he's got no self-belief at all, has he? No self-confidence. And he was like saying to the guy who put it on him, wait for me inside, wait for me inside, go inside, meet me inside. You know, people who really want to fight, they normally say, meet me outside, meet me outside. You know, where there's no nobody to break up the fight or there's no witnesses to witness you putting a beating on somebody. So most people who really want to fight, they say, meet me outside. But you know the black quitter, he said to the guy who put it on him, meet me inside where there's a lot of security around and a lot of people to break up the fight when I'm getting my head caved in like Prince Patel. Oh, he didn't want to fight, man. He tried to blow job his way out of the fight. He tried to blow job his way out. Yeah, he quit again, didn't he? Yeah, he quit again. You know, he's got no self-belief at all, has he? No self-confidence. Begging people to leave a positive comment on his videos. Write a positive comment underneath this video. Write something positive about me. Who does that? Who begs people to leave a positive comment on their videos? Write something positive about me. Do you know what I mean? Who does that? And he said in an interview that if I put it on him, he's going to bitch slap me. But we know what happened the last time I went to put it on you. You had to quickly go to Spain, conveniently. So you know you're not going to bitch slap anybody. But if you want to have a straightener, we can do. But don't keep going on and on and on and on and on. Like Kawasaki. He's worse than Kawasaki. We'll have a straightener on the cobbles. Like Frotch and Kawasaki. But don't keep going on and on and on and on and on. Like Kawasaki. You know, he's got no self-belief at all, has he? running up to ring card girls and begging him for a photo so he can get some likes. You know, he's desperate in it. He's desperate. He's got a low self-esteem. He's a quitter in it. He hasn't got the heart or the guts or the minerals. So he needs people to like his photos. And he sent me a photo on Instagram one time of him with this woman who I used to have a few message exchanges with on Instagram and WhatsApp saying, yeah, I've taken your girlfriend, ha 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 ha. I wish you my fucking girlfriend, I've never met her once. She used to message me, asking me to go and see her all the time and I never went to see her once. So how, how is that my girlfriend? And then he says, yeah, but uh, you sent her a message saying that she's marryable. Listen, men will tell women anything to get a blowjob off them. Yeah, men will tell women anything to get a blowjob off them. Like, you know that woman there, yeah? She looks all right, don't she? But you know those tattoos? Those tattoos have taken her from being probably a eight out of 10 down to a six out of 10. Yeah, in my opinion, she's been ruined by those tattoos. But you know, if I was in a nightclub and she came up to me and we were talking and there was a bit of a sexual vibe and she came back here and she took her clothes off and I seen those tattoos and she said to me, do you like my tattoos? I wouldn't say those tattoos are horrible. Those tattoos have taken you down a few levels. You want to get them removed ASAP because they're fucking horrible. You know, I'd say, yeah, they're nice. Yeah. Where did you get them done? Yeah, they're quite good they are. Yeah, I like them. You know, I'd be all fake, like Anthony Joshua. Because if I told her that I don't like the tattoos, that would ruin the sexual vibe. So men tell women anything to get a blowjob off them. So you know the black quitter messaging me saying, yeah, you, you really like that woman. You said she's marriable. Yeah, you really liked her. You said she's really nice. I just said she's marriable for blowjob reasons. And when I said she's nice, what else have I said in these videos? You can make any woman look nice. You take an average woman and you put makeup on her, fake eyelashes. 
hair extensions, fake lips, photos from fancy angles, Snapchat filters. Get the woman to pout like Coogan and she'll look stunning. It's fake. You can make any woman look nice. So when I said that fucking woman's nice, is she really nice? It's an illusion. It's an illusion. So, you know, the black quitter. You know, if you want to try and upset me, you have to do better than that. You have to do better than going up to some random woman who I don't even fucking know off the internet and taking a photo with her and sending it me on Instagram in a direct message trying to upset me. You have to do better than that. I know you're upset that the Turkish asylum seeker started messaging me on Instagram, but she came to me. I didn't go to her. I don't chase after women. You know Dan Bilzerian, yeah? You know when he was younger, he probably struggled sexually like Coogan. So he probably thought to himself, oh, I'm gonna work hard, I'm gonna become a success so women chase after me. I'm sick of being rejected by women, so I'm gonna become a success and make that money so women chase after me. And you see those women there, yeah? Those women have got to try and blow job their way into his circle. Now that he's a success and he's made a load of money, they've got to try and blow job their way in to his little circle, his little cult. So he's the one being chased now, isn't he? Dan Bilzerian. He's not the one chasing like the black quitter. He's not getting rejected like Coogan. Dan Bilzerian. You know, women are chasing after him, trying to get into his circle. And it's the same with AKA Skins. AKA Skins has put himself in a position where women go to him to try and get to Joshua. Even though Joshua lost, there's probably still a bit of sexual demand. So AKA Skins is still milking that demand and he's still milking Joshua's name for sexual reasons. So AKA Skins, he's done well to put himself in a position where women go to him to try and get to Joshua, even though Joshua lost. So that's the position that the black quitter needs to try and put himself in instead of chasing after women and begging him for a photo so he can get some likes. Trying to be like Mayweather, trying to be flashy. You're not Mayweather, man. So stop trying to act like Mayweather. You're not Mayweather. When Mayweather boxed Shane Mosley and he got caught with that big right hand and it rocked him, you know, Mayweather toughed it out, didn't he? He shown that grit and he won the fight. You wouldn't fucking tough it out like that. You'd quit, yeah? You haven't got the grit, you've got the quit. So stop trying to act like Mayweather. You're not Mayweather. The black quitter is just trying to get hype, in here Because he knows he's not gonna do anything in boxing. He has to try and get hype. You know, he's a clown, in here like Lennox Lewis. Yeah. You remember that little fake WWE fight with Mayweather and that wrestler, Big Show? You know, Mayweather blooded him up, didn't he? But that's, <laughs> that's all fake, isn't it? Mayweather would get battered in a real fight though, wouldn't he? He would get fucking battered in a real fight with that Big Show. I went down to that KSI Logan Paul press conference the other day. That press conference was a load of shit, wasn't it? It was so cringeworthy, it was just so tacky. It was just so shit, that press conference. You know, these guys are doing well, aren't they? KSI and Logan Paul, they're doing well, aren't they? They're doing good numbers and they're doing fucking well. But I just don't know why. It might be because I'm older than these f people in the crowd, you know, the fans of these two. They're like teenagers, aren't they, little kids? And like, one of them will say to the other one, my dick's bigger than yours. And then he'll say to him, no, my dick's bigger than yours, ha ha ha. And then everyone will start laughing in the crowd and it's just like, what the fuck is this shit? What is this, how is this caught on? How are these two fuckers doing big numbers like that? You know, with that kind of shit banter. Big dick banter, you know, it's not, I don't know, look at him doing that as well. What's that all about? It's just a load of shit, man. I don't get it. I don't fucking get it, man. <sighs> you 
You know, Eddie Hearn sat there with a fake smile, you know, pretending he's enjoying himself. He's not enjoying himself at all. He's cringing, isn't he? He's just got his promoter's head on. So he's pretending to be enjoying himself. You know, pretending it's a great event. Pretending he's enjoying himself. He's not enjoying himself at all. That's a fake smile. He's got his promoter's head on, hasn't he? And it's like, you know when fish eyes with the big dent in his forehead, promoted Billy Joe Saunders. You know, any time Eddie Young got interviewed, he'd say, yeah, yeah, Billy Joe Saunders failed a drug test. Yeah, 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 he failed a drugs test. Yeah, drugs, yeah, drugs, drugs, yeah, drugs. He failed a drugs test, drugs. But you know, now he signed him. Eddie Young hasn't mentioned drugs once, has he? He's conveniently developed memory loss. I'm not saying Billy Joe Saunders is a drug cheat. I'm saying Eddie Hearn is a snidey fucker. Yeah, he is a snidey fucker, Eddie Hearn. But yeah, that'll do, you know, just a little shit video today about Joshua trying to threaten my life and the black quitter bottling it again. You know, I'm begging Coogan to help him be safe. Yeah, those Be Safe t-shirts have sold quite well, you know, thanks to you people who have bought merchandise. It's selling quite well. It's a bit tacky, and it? It's a bit corny, it's a bit cheesy. You know, selling mugs with my face on, it's a bit, it's a bit embarrassing, isn't it? But I've got to do it. Do you know what I mean? I've got to step up. I can't keep having the status of a plum. You've got the status of a plum, you're a plum. Yeah, Coogan placed an order as well on the Be Safe t-shirts. He sent me a message saying, Be safe in an XXL. Yeah, thanks for that. That's quite interesting, isn't it? That's quite interesting, that is. What's all that about? You know, the other day, Coogan blocked me on Instagram. And then about an hour later, he unblocked me. Now he's ordering some merch. You know, he's all over the place, isn't he? He's all over the place. And you know what I think it is? I think it's, you know, because Coogan was struggling sexually when he was younger and he went years without any kind of sexual action. Then he started to succeed in the YouTube boxing world. Then he started getting a load of fanny all of a sudden. You know, it was a bit of a shock to his system, wasn't it? So I think that's sending him all over the place. And Mike Tyson said something similar. When Mike Tyson was broke and he didn't have any money, then when a load of money got thrown at him, he couldn't handle it and he went mental. You know, he got locked up, he got fucking done for rape, he got done for this and that. You know, smashing people up in the streets. He couldn't handle having nothing and then all of a sudden having a lot. So I think the same applies with Coogan. Going from getting no sex at all to having all these women throwing themselves at him because he's interviewed Joshua and all the other big names in boxing and he's got a blue tick. So I think that's sending him all over the place. So one minute he's kicking me off his channel. The next minute he's blocking me. The next minute he's unblocking me. The next minute he's ordering some merch. You know, he's all over the place, isn't he? Yeah, he's all over the place. But I'm not gonna slag him off too much, you know, until he's paying me for the t-shirt. Ram a Nathan. Ram a Nathan. That's a gay name, isn't it? Ram a Nathan. But yeah, that'll do, you know. Thanks for tuning in again, yeah? Thanks for that.